I think it's official that spring is finally here. We got a really good day outside. Just got off work, came home. Now it's time to film a video. And today, I think I wanna talk about my Winchester SX4. But first, I want to talk about what I'm planning for the channel this spring and summer. I had a really good idea pop into my head that I wanna bounce off of you guys and see what you guys think and see if it's something that you would be wanting to watch. But I was thinking that every Friday, we could do a gear review video. I mean, I've done a lot of gear reviews in the past, but I've also got tons of new gear that I want to share with you guys and tell you if it's a hunk of junk or if I actually like it. So I was thinking field tested Fridays could possibly be a thing that we do here on this channel. I know we've done waterfowl Wednesdays, which we can still do. I really need to kind of focus on that a little bit. It's been really crazy in my personal life lately with work and wedding planning, which that's being postponed. But it, I've had a lot of personal stuff going on, so I haven't had a whole lot of time for like the past month to put into the channel. So hopefully things will turn around soon and we can get back on board with the Waterfowl Wednesdays. But I want to know from you guys, what do you guys think of uh, Field Tested Fridays? Is it something you'd want to watch? I know that not everybody's going to want to watch a video on this uh, Rogers Double Spinning Wing Elite Bag. Is it worth buying? Do I like it? What do I use it for? Those are the things I want to talk about on those uh, field tested Fridays. So if you guys think that's a good video idea, leave a thumbs up and drop a comment down below for me. But you guys came here to see what I think of my Winchester SX4. This is my waterfowl shotgun and I've hunted with it for like two and a half seasons now. So I've got, I've, I've put it through a lot of use and abuse and I've kind of formed a really good opinion on it. So if you're in the market for a, one of these, I'm gonna try not to say the word gun very much in this video, but I'm probably gonna flop. So this video will get demonetized. So please leave me a like down below. Like I said, I put this thing to the test, used it for two and a half seasons. And so I've formed a bit of an opinion on it. I wanna share with you guys what I think about it. If you're looking at getting the Winchester SX4, there's a few things that you need to know. The first thing is that the charging handle, this, as you can tell, is an aftermarket charging handle. Well, Josh, why do you have an aftermarket charging handle on your shotgun? The stock ones come out, and this one does too. The SX4s have a really big problem with these things coming out of the guns, just out of the blue. Like you go down to unload your gun after a hunt or put more shells in, you look down and you see that. And that's, that's a sad thing to see. Mine came out a couple years ago, probably about six months after I got my gun when I was turkey hunting. I went back to the truck to go and unload my gun and there was no charging handle. So if you're looking at that, be prepared to get some more. When I lost mine, the SX4 was kind of new and I think a lot of people had the same problem. So the, the handles were on back order. So I bought an aftermarket one. It was like 55 bucks, but I needed one. So I had to do that. Other than that, this SX4, it's a three and a half inch chamber, 12 gauge. Uh, it's a gas operated system all around super good gun i'd recommend it i have used it and abused it and put it through all kinds of rusting i even bent the rib i don't know if you guys will be able to see that uh maybe yep there you go i bent the rib i don't know what the heck it got bent on you might be able to see it better on that side Oh yeah, there you go. Nice little dink there. This thing's held up to use and abuse. With it not being camo, it does rust. I've got quite a bit of surface rust on there, as, as you guys can see, but that doesn't bother me. This, is, this thing's a tool. This is what I use to hunt. It's like if I'm gonna go drive a nail in, I'm gonna use a hammer. That's the same thing. If I'm gonna go hunt ducks, I'm gonna grab my shotgun so that I can go and hunt ducks. I treat it as a tool. Yes, I try to take care of it, but there's no point in me stressing about it, especially when I'm beating it around in the kayaks, doing kayak hunts. I mean, this thing gets so freaking waterlogged and soaked, and it's held up great. And I don't want to steer you guys in the wrong direction. The only hang-ups on it, like I said, these things come out, so be aware of that. Maybe get an extra one when you buy the gun, um, just so then you have one in the off chance it does come out. And I've had a few hang-ups in three and a half inch shells, but I think the biggest thing was I got a bad case. I used to shoot three and a half inch double Bs at geese. And this one case of shells that I got, it hung up like every third shell. I think the shells themselves were long. I gave some to Levi last season to shoot and he was having hang-ups and everything. So I think it was just a bad case of shells. They were just a little too long for uh, the three and a half inch guns. So. 
other than that, I haven't had any issues shooting three and a half inch shells. But yeah, gas operated gun, really pretty lightweight, super comfortable to shoulder, and it's a gun. It is what it is. I'm not telling you guys to go out and buy an SX4 right now. I'm telling you, I used it for two and a half seasons. It has held up to a, everything that I could throw at it. And I would recommend you guys go check it out the next time you're in the gun store looking for a gun. I shouldn't be saying gun so much. Pew pews. So on mine, I've got an aftermarket choke. Not a necessity. Not something that you need to buy when you buy a gun. I see on Facebook all the time. People posting on like waterfowl pages saying, hey, I just bought the new Super Black Eagle. What's a good aftermarket choke? The best thing you can do before you even go out and buy an aftermarket choke is go out and pattern your gun. If it patterns good, there's no reason for you to need to go and get an aftermarket choke. Me, I had a bad experience with one of my old guns where my choke tube got stuck in it. So now I won't go duck hunt without an extended choke tube. That's just my personal preference. Yes, I might clean my gun regularly, but there's also a chance that it can get stuck because of how much water gets on my gun. This could rust and seize up in there. So I try my best to just use one that comes out and sticks out of the end of the barrel. Now this one is a Carlson's Black Cloud Choke Tube. After doing a patterning video with my kicks and using Black Cloud shells, you guys were commenting saying that I shouldn't be using that choke with Black Cloud loads, which, I didn't do enough research on that, so I just went ahead and bought a Black Cloud choke tube made by Carlson's. and I tried it out this season, and it killed a lot of birds. It worked really well for me, so I don't have any definitive proof. So maybe this summer we'll go out and do a pattern testing video with the Black Cloud choke and the Kicks choke and then also the Stock choke and see what happens with those. But you don't need an aftermarket choke. Go out and pattern your gun, see how it patterns. If it doesn't pattern well, then you know, maybe think about it. That is just my personal opinion. If you guys have anything else to say on the matter of chokes, leave it in the comments. I'm always wanting to learn more stuff. I'm not an expert. Some of you guys might think I know everything there is to know about duck hunting, and there's also other people that think I'm an idiot because I like widgeons, but you know, it is what it is. If you guys have any more info on choke tubes and what you guys have experienced in the past, leave it in the comments down below. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gun's not loaded, by the way. <laughs> Probably should have told you that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yep. <laughs> Pretty solid piece. I'd recommend it. I'm gonna not try and draw this out any much longer because I've said what I need to say. I'm not a gun connoisseur. I use it as a tool. It is my tool to go and shoot ducks and I haven't had any major problems with it. I've never taken it on a hunt and not shot ducks because my gun wouldn't fire, it wouldn't cycle, things like that. The only time it didn't cycle was with the um, three and a half inch loads. But that was just that one three and a half inch case that I got. Because all the rest of the three and a half inch shells I've shot have cycled just fine. Eh, it's kind of things that happen, but it is what it is. Like I said earlier, let me know what you guys think about the field tested Fridays. I put my gear through a lot of use and abuse and I could definitely shine some light on some of the things that I've used and uh, hopefully help you guys on your next purchase to where you're not purchasing a piece of crap or, and you're purchasing something that somebody's tested out and told you, hey, I like it. If you guys want one of these hats, I've got a bunch of them on the website. The go over there, OutdoorLimitShop.com, got a link in the description. We're still shipping out orders as of right now with this whole thing that's going on and we're in quarantine. so. Um, if you're looking to pick up a new hat for the summer or a new shirt or whatever, I've got some on the website for you. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, I've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. So be sure to follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will catch you guys on the next one.